What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and in this video I thought it would be useful but also kind of fun to go over a videography glossary of terms. I realised the other day that there are so many abbreviations out there so I thought let's go through the ones that you'll see quite a bit and it should be good, useful, fun. Let's do it. As ever, everything mentioned in this video I'll pop in the description box below. And of course, this isn't sponsored content, so your support means a lot to me. If you could hit the notification bell next to your subscribe button, it just means the world to me. Plus, you won't miss a video. Thank you kindly. So there are too many abbreviations when it comes to the world of videography. So let's dive in. I'm going to go alphabetically. Don't worry, I don't have one for every single letter of the alphabet. So let's start with codec. And codec is short for coder decoder or compression decompression because that's what they do. So codecs are a format of compression. You can get really efficient ones like H.265 which give you tiny little files but maybe a bit slow to edit or you can get less efficient ones like ProRes which are actually really fast to edit. Next we have CRI which stands for Color Rendition Index and it's used to indicate the color accuracy of video lights. It's actually a measurement that's based on the way that the human eye interprets light. To be honest, this is not something you need to be terribly worried about when buying video lighting, because almost everything out there has a really high CRI rating these days. Lights that have bad CRI ratings are things like domestic lighting, uh, strip lighting in particular. HLG, as you may know, is hybrid log gamma, a combination of two gamma curves, Rec 709 and log. There does seem to be some confusion as to what HLG is for and how to use it, so be sure to watch my video that I released recently about how to expose and then grade it. It's linked up here and down there. Next up we have IRE, which obviously means Institute of Radio Engineers. That's obvious, right? Basically, IRE refers to luminance on a scale of 0 to 100. A lot of people refer to it as percentage, and even though technically they're not the same thing, they basically are, so there you go. ISO is next, and I know you know what ISO is, but did you know it stands for International Organization of Standardization? So it should be IOS, right? Well, for some reason, they use the acronym ISO, and with acronyms, you pronounce the abbreviated letters. So it really is ISO and not ISO. Really? You know, this is the kind of thing where I, I worked in the wine industry for about a decade and the world calls Moet and Chandon Moe. And of course it's not, because one of the founders, Mr. Moet, who was German, so you do pronounce the T, partnered up with Mr. Chandon, a French guy. So yeah, but the thing is, if I go around calling it Moet, everyone thinks I'm an idiot. What is it? Moe or Moet? ISO or ISO? Hmm? Tell the guy, tell everyone. Tell everyone. Actually, the best comparison I can think of is probably the world's best known acronym, and that's NASA. Imagine calling NASA N-A-S-A. -A. Now that would be weird. And then we come to lens coating abbreviations, and these kind of do my head in a bit because there seems to be too many for a start. And then each lens company have their own proprietary abbreviations for different lens coatings and glass elements. Maybe once upon a time when there was a greater variance in quality of lenses, you might want to be concerned about this, but not now. All new lenses are crazy sharp and give you loads of contrast, so I don't think these abbreviations should be a factor when choosing a lens. I think focusing on all the other things are way more important, build quality. Uh, focal length, um, weight, that kind of thing, price, value. Lux is a measurement of light used by video light companies to communicate how bright their lights are. Lux actually means light in Latin, but you've got to be careful because companies advertise the Lux rating at different distances. You might see a product rated at 2000 Lux at one meter or another one with 3000 Lux at three meters. So. A Lux rating is not complete without the distance, so just bear that in mind. Then we get to TLCI, and this is another rating of colour accuracy that you'll see alongside CRI. TLCI stands for Television Lighting Consistency Index, and you remember how I mentioned that CRI is a measurement based on how the human eye interprets light? Well, TLCI is based on the way that a camera sensor interprets light. In theory, the two measurements should score fairly similarly, 
But again, if you're buying a modern video light, even even small video lights score really highly on both of these scales these days. I thought about mentioning RAW in this video, not to explain what it is, because I think you know what it is, but to ask you a question, why is it that RAW is always written in uppercase? Is RAW an acronym or not? Do you know, before I started researching this video, I thought that RAW was an acronym for read after write, because that's what it's doing, right? But upon researching for this video, I couldn't find a definitive answer on this anywhere. So if you know the answer, please let everyone know and pop it in the description box below. Is RAW an acronym? If so, what for? If not, why is it always written in caps? And finally we have WB, white balance. And I don't think I need to go into what it is, because you know what it is. But here's an interesting factoid about how colour temperature is represented. Kelvin. Kelvin was originally correlated by observing the colour of a piece of steel when heated to different temperatures. Now, I found that interesting. I don't know about you, but yeah, I thought that was interesting factoid. So there you go. I hope this is fun, but I want to hear from you. Was this helpful? Did you know them all already? What did I miss? Let me know in the comment section below, please, and I may do a part two. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.